study today, then the investigation is how to meet the human rights. Just two hundred years ago, here at the United Nations headquarters in New York, a decision was made of historical importance. The date was March 21st, 1994. A young Australian human rights activist called Nicholas Tunin had brought a case to the United Nations Human Rights Committee that was responsible for interpreting and applying the international treaty on civil and political rights. Mr. Tunin alleged that his human rights were violated by the existence of the law in his home state of Tasmania that criminalized all sexual relationships between consenting and men, including in Canada. Committee, after examining the arguments and counter arguments, agreed with him. It decided that Australia was in breach of its international obligations under that treaty. The law in question, the committee found, violated the human rights. It subjected him to the threat, arrest, detention, and criminalization simply because he happened to be homosexual rather than heterosexual. And it also had a wider negative effect on society at large by reinforcing state and prison. The case known as Versus Australia marked a wide step for wide ranging implications for the human rights of millions of people. The Human Rights Committee has not claimed that the rights to be free from discrimination applies to everyone gay, gay, lesbian, or bisexual. Sometimes history is made with great fanfare. Sometimes, as at the UN, it is made of ordinary meeting rooms, people banged up to mortgages and injectors, recorded in particular UN documents, translated into multiple languages. So it was in this case. As a result of bringing the right now in the world, Nicholas Truman held his complaint in power. The Australian state of Tasmania removed the offending law from its staff. And a signal was sent to all other countries that had similar laws. The Human Rights Committee has since reaffirmed its position in successive cases, entrenching the human rights law principle that no country is entitled to discriminate against people on grounds of their sexuality. It is a principle that has since been endorsed by other UN human rights treaty bodies dealing with other areas of human rights law, such as torture, children's rights, economic, social, and cultural rights, and discrimination against women. Since the 1994, more than 30 countries have taken steps to abolish the offense of homosexuality. Some have enacted new laws providing greater protection against discrimination on grounds of sexual orientation or gender identity. And in many parts of the world, we have witnessed remarkable shifts in public attitudes in favor of greater acceptance of gay and lesbian people. But criminal sanctions remain in place in more than 70 countries, exposing many of them to the risk of arrest, imprisonment, even in some cases, death not because they have harmed anyone else or caused others, but simply for being who they are and for loving another human being. And of course, in many countries, homophobia remains right, and lesbians, gays, bisexuals, and transgender persons continue to suffer gender discrimination, torture, and rape. The United Nations Secretary General, Ki Moon, launched an appeal for the worldwide decriminalization of homosexuality and for every country to ensure equal rights for all people, regardless of sexual orientation 
or gender identity. The one great decoration for that, he said, is just that. It is very nice and it appears to us all, whoever we are, whatever we do, whoever we share our lives with. No, it's a bit confusing in some regards. It goes to the heart of what we believe. It challenges us all to look up to the fundamental principle on which each end or our human rights rest. The equal worth and equal dignity of all human beings. 